what happens if this disease is misdiagnosed? As I was telling, it is often misdiagnosed. There are many contributing factors like low awareness, differential diagnosis, the failure of step work, up, then potential impact, inappropriate treatment, unchecked disease progression, low survival rates, impaired quality of life. So we should always, whenever we are seeing a patient who has come to us with breathlessness, cough, which is not being uh, treated by either inhalers, one should always think that this is something else that can be ILD as well. And if we are hearing preps, that is more significant of ILD. Always there is a multidisciplinary approach in a, a diagnosis of ILD. Pulmonologists, radiologists, and pathologists, you have to work hand in hand with everybody. I frequently go to my radiologist to ask that what kind of ILD is this? It is not being fitting into UIP probable or incon inconsistent with UIP. So you have to go to your radiologist. You have to see the DICOM yourself, not only the films, but also in the CD or DICOM. You have to ask your pathologist. If, if you have done a biopsy, you have to see whether there is carbonosis posa or not. And one more person you should add in your team is a hematologist. He also plays a very important role in your treatment because the thing is that the rheumatologist will tell about the autoimmune features. Coming to a newer uh, terminology which was real, uh, recently being uh, used very frequently in different papers and also the guidelines have mentioned about progressive pulmonary fibrosis. This is a kind of ILD which progresses. It can be IPF or it can be non-IPF. It should meet the following criteria. That is worsening of respiratory symptoms. Then there should be physiological evidence of disease progression. That is FEV1 and DLCO, which are reducing over six months of duration. And HRCT evidence of disease progression. That is, there is increased in fibrosis, newer uh, now, lesions which are there on the CT scan. So these are the features which will tell that it is progressive pulmonary fibrosis. Why this is separated? Because now the treatment for progressive pulmonary fibrosis is more uh, importance is given to the fiber model uh, agents. Hence, uh, it has been separated from the normal classification. So how do we manage this patient? First, you have to do complete evaluation. You have to do take a thorough history do a physical examination, symptom assessment, pulmonary function test, quantification of fibrosis on HRCT. SOS, you require a biopsy. If it's mild, that is patient is not so symptomatic, there is FBC, which is post vital capacity. If the decline is less than 5% at 12 months or less than 10% of fibrosis or CT, features are not consistent with UIP. These patients are labeled as mild disease and you have to do pulmonary function test exercise capacity every six months, capacity every 12 months. How do you treat this patient? You have to remove the offending agent, smoking cessation, close observation, and you have to treat the underlying cause. If there is autoimmune disorder or there is some kind of uh, hypersensitive pneumonitis features, then you have to give immunosuppression. Like immunomodulators are playing a more important role in this subset of ILD. Then you have a moderate disease, which is, again, the patient is having mild symptoms, but FVC, that is post-viral capacity, is declining more than 5%, but less than 12% in 10% in 12 months, and more than 10% of lung fibrosis on HRCT, and if it is indeterminate UI. Again, you have to go for pulmonary function test. You have to uh, give exercise uh, capacity. You have to do a six-minute walk test. Every three to six months, and HRCT equivalent. This subset requires multidisciplinary discussion. May require tissue diagnosis because it is indeterminate UI. Then immunosuppressive therapy and also uh, antifibrotic therapy is to be given. So uh, this is how you are treating the moderate disease. Now coming to severe disease. These are the patients who are symptomatic with decrease in quality of life and frequent exacerbations. 
FPC decline is more than 10% of predicted at 12 months and more than 10% of lung fibrosis on HRCT. Probable or typical UIP on HRCT or definite UIP on histopathology. Then you have to do a pulmonary function test, exercise testing every three to six months on HRCT every six to 12 months. Again, this will require a multidisciplinary discussion. Consider antifibrotic therapy as a first line treatment, continuation of immunosuppression if evidence of inflammation are there, pulp rehabilitation, early lung transplant evaluation, and palliative care consultation. These are the patients of severe disease who you require to monitor because most of our patients who are, consult who are, con who are consulting to us come under the severe disease. Why so? Because as I told earlier that there is misdiagnosis, these patients are labeled, often labeled as COPD or asthma. And these, um, because of these main two reasons, most of these patients come to us with severe disease, where, they, where we have to ask them to go for lung transplantation or we have to ask them for proper palliative care. Coming to the treatment. So, as I was telling again and again, there are a role of immunomodulators and fibromodulators. What are immunomodulators? These are the immunosuppressive therapies which are being given to the patient. Like you are giving steroids, you are giving mycophenolate, mephetil, or you are giving uh, azathioprine and other modulators. These are the drugs which are actually antifibrotic, like perfenidone and nintadanep. These are the two line of management what we give giving to the patient and. This the treatment depends on what kind of features are you seeing on your HRC. If there is more of inflammation, then immunomodulators play a very important role. If there is more of fibrosis, you have to give fibromodulators. To summarize, yes, I do know that it's a very vast topic. I, I, I won't be able to complete it even in one hour, but I by my main purpose was to. Uh, tell everyone of you about ILDs, when to suspect and what are different types of ILDs. I have not got into detail of each ILD because of the paucity of time. So, ILD is a disease that requires high, high degree of suspicion. You need to suspect every patient who is coming to you, you with recent onset breathlessness. Like that is between six, three to six months and these age more than 60 years. Early diagnosis and treatment play a key role in treatment. Yes, if you are diagnosing the patient earlier and treating them properly, so they are as good as cured. They, are, they have a good quality of life. They have a long duration of uh, life without any exacerbations. And you have to treat them properly with proper vaccination, rehabilitation, immunomodulators, submodulators. So you get more chance of treatment. And whenever you have any kind of... Uh, you are seeing a patient and you are having a doubt, you should always try to refer to a specialist, have a multidisciplinary discussion, and you can go ahead with the lung transplantation also as early as possible. If the patient is having decline in his FBC and he's having progressive pulmonary fibrosis, as I was discussing with severe disease. So lung transplantation is, is now being done in India. And there have been good responses in certain amount of patients as well. I thank you.